Hey everybody, this is Jason Creel. This is the Lawn Care Life. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 skills that you can work on when you're riding a zero turn mower. Now, am I the greatest zero turn mower driver of all time? Probably not. But I do have a lot of experience. I hope you'll find this not only educational, you'll learn something. I hope you'll find it entertaining as well. See if you agree with the list. You may have something to add. 11, 12, 13, 14, you can do so in the comments. So let's get started. 10 skills you can learn, practice, and master on a zero turn mower. First skill I'm gonna demonstrate, and I'm wearing my uh, earplugs and safety glasses. First skill I'm gonna demonstrate is the tight maneuver. Now sometimes a zero turn mower, one of the greatest things about being able to turn with zero turn is the, the ability to maneuver in tight spaces, whether that be in a workshop, trying to get around stuff. So let me see if I can demonstrate. All right, I'm gonna use some cardboard boxes for this uh, demonstration. Now you can picture these being Lamborghinis and Teslas that you don't want to scratch up. Next on the list is the reverse cut. They think, why in the world would you need to cut backwards? I'm gonna show you next. Let's show you the reverse cut. <clears throat> the reverse cut, in a situation like this, I've got a little narrow section over here, as you can see, and there's a house and it's got windows and all that, and I don't wanna break the windows. So, you know, I've got this chute block on here, which is really cool, and that, that helps um, keep debris from throwing out, but I don't want to put all my confidence in this. So sometimes when you have a narrow era area like this, I might pull in there, cut it, and instead of turning around, which is going to put my discharge toward the windows, I might back up and then go forward, back up, go forward. Let me demonstrate. My, my discharge never was aimed toward the house or it may have been a car or whatever. I was able to keep it. Now, I don't want to do that on the whole yard. Uh, obviously, I do put some confidence in the shoot block, but in a narrow section like this, I might back up three or four times like I just did. The next situation can be an annoying one. Sometimes you're, you're, in, you're mowing the grass, and what do you see out in the yard? A basketball, a soccer ball, something like that. Now, if it's a, a Frisbee or something like that, you may have to get off the mower. But sometimes if it's a ball, something you can move a little bit, uh, you, can, you can move the ball without getting off the mower. Now, sometimes if it's something light, you can use the side discharger to kind of blow it out of the way. But in this situation, I'm going to show you how we get the basketball out of the way uh, without getting off the mower. And you may think, Jason, this is ridiculous. Anybody knows how to do this. Well, I'm just telling you some of the skills that I use when I'm out there mowing grass and it saves you time. And of course you could run around, pick up all the toys out of the yard before you start. And that would probably be a great idea. But occasionally you get in a situation, the ball's in the yard and you got to get it out of the way. two ways you can move it with the, the actual air from the side discharge or move it with your tire and number four I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate because I don't have a, a great area to do so but I've had to, to live this out okay sometimes when you're mowing you may get in a situation where you're on a hillside and you're mowing and the mower begins to slide down the hill I would compare it with hydroplaning in a car rule number one in my opinion is don't panic okay well, rule number one probably should have been uh, don't get it on the steep, wet hill. But rule number two, after you got on the steep, wet hill, is don't panic. 
Oftentimes, these zero turn mowers in that situation, you got, you got to think of a couple things in your favor. One, you've got the roll bar here, so that, that's good. But two, that they have a most of the time a very low center of gravity and it takes a lot to flip them. Now they can be flipped, you can definitely get hurt on them. So I'm, I'm emphasizing safety here, but use your roll bar. And then also as you slide, just let it slide to the bottom of the hill and then regroup. Now, let's say there's a pond at the bottom of the hill. You, 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 to me, depending on how strong your hydros are, you might have a better opportunity to try to turn and get going sideways on the hill than to back it up. I mean, you can try backing up, but if it's not going to back up, it's just not going to back up. So at that point, again, if, if there's no pond down there, let it just go, ride it to the bottom of the hill, and, and then when you get to the bottom of the hill, you know, get out of there. But if there's a pond, you, you need to try to get going sideways uh, sooner or later. Uh, the water uh, may stop you and you, you can get yourself out um, that way too. But I, I'm just trying to tell you what to do if you happen to get caught sliding down a hill. It does happen. All right, number five, and this is gonna be a simple one, but it's blowing off the driveway. Now, is this a blower? Of course it's not a blower. I'm not saying this is best case scenario, but sometimes if you've got tons of clippings and leaves and all over the driveway, you can at least use the mower to get the majority of it off. Then come back with the backpack blower and blow it off. I'm not saying you got to, but in a pinch, or if you're just lazy, use your zero turn mower, blow it off. So let me demonstrate that right now. fall a little bit on the lazy man side but uh, just showing you what you can do if you want to do it I wouldn't call that uh, professional etiquette but <laughs> you can you can use it if you want to All right I love this one the pothole maneuver so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna demonstrate hitting a pothole and show you what happens when you do it wrong and then I'm gonna show you what to do to do it right because what happens if you hit that pothole or you got a dip in the yard boom it bottoms out it leaves a big scalp place that's not good so I'm gonna demonstrate that, show you what it does, and then I'm gonna demonstrate what you should do if you know there's a dip coming. Now sometimes you, you can't see the pothole, it just happens, um, but if you do the same yards over and over again, you probably learn where the dips are and you can be prepared to take action. So look at this situation here. We've got, got a pothole in the yard, and I'm gonna demonstrate what happens when you hit it, it's gonna bottom out, then I'm gonna show you how to, how to handle it. Now one thing you could do if it's a, uh, narrow hole like this obviously you put dirt in it that make a lot of sense or sometimes you can straddle it with your wheels and that makes a lot of sense but sometimes it's more difficult to straddle it if it's a bigger area so uh, you might could have to cut you know along if it's a dip you might have to go with the dip you know parallel with the dip instead of across the dip but you can go across it and I'll show you how to do it and then uh, if it doesn't make a perfect uh, cut then you got to go back and clean it up where you string trimmer and make it all smooth and nice. So let me show you. All right, so here's a pothole, a dip in the yard. I'm gonna run over with the mower and see if I can get it to scalp bottom out here and show you what it looks like and then show you how I, what I do when I know that there's a dip in the yard. have experience with this you know I have bottoms out so here's what you do in those situations hopefully your mower has a foot pedal on it so when I see it coming I'm just I'm, I'm simply going to use the foot pedal to raise it up and then when I get past the dip I'm going to drop it back down now to me this is one of the advantages uh, I like stand on mowers but this is one advantage of a sit down mower versus a stand on mower because it's hard to raise the deck and drive on a stand on mower but in this situation I just raise it up and then like I said if you leave the grass a little high you can come in with a string trimmer and, uh, and clean it up. So anyway that's what you do in that situation. You can take a thumbnail picture. Yeah. All right. What do you think we could uh all right, the next one here is going around a tree ring. Now this isn't that complicated, but obviously you don't want to throw the debris into the tree ring or into the flower beds. Make a circle, don't rub things up. And I will say this, 
eventually sometimes in your grass if you keep going the same way around the tree ring every single time it'll end up making a, a rut in the grass and just look bad so you may have to uh, adjust your tree ring or maybe make a wider tree ring do more of the string trimmer or use the push more on occasions um, but if it's soft ground and you go the same way over time eventually it's going to leave some scars Now one thing I like to do in that situation is if you can go ahead and do your edging around the tree ring and then do your trimming, if you throw any bark out or pine straw or whatever you use, then the mower comes around and it kind of cleans it all up. It's like a magic eraser, it's just gone. All right, what I want to demonstrate now is a three-point turn. Now, if these things are zero-turn mowers, but you rarely actually do a zero-point turn. It's more of a three-point turn, and if the grass is thin or wet, you're going to be even more careful to not leave tire marks when you turn. So let me try to demonstrate a nice, soft, gentle three-point turn when I finish my, my pass, and when I get back, turn back around to make some nice straight lines. One skill that may be taken for granted but not by me and that's the ability just to run the thing wide open on straightaways because at the end of the day most people uh, a lot of people are trying to cut their own grass want to get done fast or they're mowing for a living and, and productivity equals money so i tell people i say drive the thing like you're running from the police i mean you know get comfortable with it know what you're doing make straight lines and hit the gas now if you let the grass grow too tall and this is uh, if you mow it only every two weeks or so it becomes difficult unless you got a really powerful mower so if you got an underpowered mower you can it doesn't give leave a clean cut if your blades aren't sharp it's not going to leave a clean cut and so powerful mower with sharp blades and not letting the grass get all overgrown then you can run it fast now, i'm not saying i always run mine wide open but i'm not moping around with a big powerful strong mower so i can get out there and crawl at a snail's pace i'm trying to move for productivity so let me demonstrate making a couple of long passes I get to number 10 i'm gonna give you a bonus number 11. number 11 is just simply being able to disperse the grass clippings off the lawn now that's easy you can um if if you have a mulch kit on there you can even do it then with a with a closed off discharge chute by simply raising your your blade up a, an inch or two over the cut height and that'll disperse them pretty well you can also use a backpack blower um, but with a side discharge you can still raise your blades up just a little bit and then, of course open the discharge to where you can disperse them now hopefully again if you're mowing regularly you're not going to have that many clippings now number 10 and this one i hope you don't have to get to and have to use often but it is something you've done if you're having to run that mower in the pond or uh, get it stuck or the battery dies or a belt breaks or something like that then you need to be able to figure out how to roll your mower or be able to pull it to get it uh, loaded up on your trailer to get it uh, worked on so oftentimes you're going to need a, um, a socket or something to be able to uh, loosen up your hydros your hydro pumps i'm not sure if i'm, I'm speaking this correctly see here on mine there's actually a diagram it shows somebody pushing the mower and there'll be a, a bolt or a nut or something that you turn that releases the hydro pumps so it, it makes it so much easier to roll now these things are still heavy now i'll be honest i've never had to do that on this particular mower and even though here's the diagram and it's showing me that i need to turn something if i need to push it i can't find the hydro pumps i don't know um, exactly where they are now i, I could probably look at your, your mower manual but a lot of times in situations like this um, they'll be back here usually they're back here and you'll need a socket to turn them uh, one on each side and that releases it where it will roll now at that point again it's still heavy if you ran into the pond get you a toe strap 
and, and you can roll it out that way. Um, you may even be able to push it up on a trailer with another mower if you got somebody to help you. I mean, anyway, it's a pain, I'm just telling you, but you need to be able to release those hydros uh, so that it will roll and, and not have to be drugged. Hey, I appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully you never had to uh, worry about getting your mower unstuck or releasing the hydro so you can roll if it breaks down. But if you do, you need to figure out how to do that and uh, hopefully this helps you thanks for watching leave your comment below if i left something off what's some other scales i should have put on there and i'm gonna have it pop it up on your screen now uh, one of my most popular videos ever if you like this video you might enjoy the 10 skills with a weed eater with a string trimmer because those are pretty cool too and that video was very very popular so check it out and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so also got a new channel called fix a lawn where i do some lawn transformation projects that's fix-a-lawn. And we'll see you guys in the next video.